Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this short video, we are going to set up and install Flutter in our local Windows machine as well as all of the dependencies that are needed to build and run Flutter applications from our local Windows machine itself. So without any further delay, let's quickly get started. But before that, if you have not subscribed to this channel already, now is a great time to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon and let's quickly get started. I am at the web page called flutter.dev and now I will be migrating to the download and install instructions. So let me click on docs, uh, get started and here we have it, get started. The very first page here is about installation. So let us select our operating system which in this case is Windows. Now as you can see these are the various dependencies which need to be fulfilled for Flutter to be able to run in your system. So for operating system we have at least Windows 7. For disk space Flutter requires this much disk space and here are some tools. So make sure that you do have Windows PowerShell and get already installed in your Windows system. Let's go further below and let's see this get the Flutter SDK. So here we can download the Windows Flutter SDK by clicking on this button. Let's go ahead and click this. So as you can see, this is a zip file. Let me go store it into downloads. And we can see here that the download has started. So I'll wait for the download to finish and I'll see you guys when the download completes. Right guys, we are back and as you can see, this zip file has been successfully downloaded. Now there is a, a very important instruction that is given here that we do not have to install Flutter in a directly like C program files that requires elevated privileges. Okay, so to do take care of that. So we can extract this zip file, and place the contained Flutter in the desired installation location of the Flutter SDK. Like it can be any directory of your choice. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go here, I am going to open it. Inside you can see that there is a folder called Flutter. Let's go ahead and let's copy this. Now I'll go back to my D drive. I'll come here and I will create a new folder. Let's call it dev. Inside dev, I'll go and create one more folder. Let's call this SDKs. Inside SDKs, I will be pasting the Flutter folder that I just copied from the zip file. Now again, as this might take a little bit of time, I'll see you guys when this copying task finishes. All right, so we are almost done with the extraction and I swear on my machine, it took a long time because I am not on SSD. I am still on those old hard disks, so it took a long while on my machine, but that is fine. The main thing is that the process is almost about to complete and it completed. All right, let's head back to this directory where we extracted it and we can see that the Flutter folder is here and inside we have so many files and folders. Now the file that we are mainly concerned with is bin. Okay, so this is the file that we have to add to the path variable of our Windows machine. So I'll just go ahead and copy it from here. And then I'll go ahead and click on the start menu and I will type in edit environment variables. And then I will click on this option. Now here we have this path variable. This is the variable that we have to go ahead and edit. So I can come here and I can add the path of the Flutter bin folder over here. All right, so we are done with that. I click on OK and I click on OK again. Let me close this folder and what I'm going to do now is I am going to open the command prompt. And here I am simply going to type the command Flutter to see whether Flutter is successfully installed in my system or not. So when I say Flutter and hit enter, I get to see a wide variety of commands, which means that Flutter has been successfully installed in my system. 
Let's come back to the documentation. Here we see update your path. This is something that we have already done. Now we have to run this particular command, which is flutter doctor. And what exactly does this command do? Well, it says here that this command checks your environment and displays a report of the status of your flutter installation. So we already know that flutter is installed in our system, but we don't know the exact status, whether we are ready to build flutter apps on our windows machine or not. So this flutter doctor command helps to tell us what might be the missing steps that we have failed to complete for flutter to be able to run perfectly on our windows machine. So I will be heading back to command prompt and I will run the flutter doctor command here. So let us say flutter doctor and let us see what happens. The first time that we run this command, it does take a little time, but it does speed up from the next run. All right, so as you can see that the command has completed. So we can see that Flutter has been successfully installed here. We can see that we have Chrome, we have IntelliJ, which I had installed previously. We have VS Code as well, we have connected devices. Now here, it says that we do not have Android Studio as well as we do not have any Android toolchain that is required to develop for Android devices. Okay, so it was unable to locate an Android SDK. So let's go ahead and fix this and this will be fixed by actually installing Android Studio on our Windows system. Let me come back to the documentation and if we go down, we have these steps for Android setup. So the first thing that we are going to do is download and install Android Studio. So if I click on this link, let me actually open this link in a new tab. If I click on this link, I am taken to the web page for Android Studio and here I can go ahead and click on download Android Studio. Then it shows me a large terms and conditions pop up. I have read and I can agree to it and let's click on download. Okay, so you guys can click on download, but since I have it downloaded already, so I can just go ahead and run the setup. Okay, so we see that the setup has started. We can click on next. Yes, we also want the AVD. Make sure that this is checked. Okay, so since I don't have enough space in C drive, I am going to install this in my D drive. And um, let me go ahead and create a new folder here. Let's call it Android Studio. Let me select this folder. Let's click on next, let's click on install and this shouldn't take a long time but I'll see you at the other end of the setup. And all right, the installation is complete. Let's click on next and let's start Android Studio. So you do not want to import any settings, so we can just skip this. All right, I'm not going to send any statistics. And then we come to this new setup wizard. All right, so let's click on next over here. Let's choose custom so we can have some custom settings. So, okay, so no need to change anything here when it asks for the JDK. I am going to choose the dark theme because that's what I prefer. Okay, so over here, it has already installed Android virtual device, but if you have not already installed Android virtual device, make sure that you tick the, this checkbox as well. All right, and we want the Android SDK. So we have API 31 for Android S and make sure that you tick HAXM as well. Let's go on next. All right, let's click on next. 
and let's click on finish. Now Android Studio is going to download some files and then it is going to make some installations for us. So we'll again have to wait and I'll see you at the other end. All right, so as you can see, our installation is complete. Let's click on finish and we should be able to see the welcome screen for Android Studio. So we are not going to create a new project or open a project or anything in Android Studio. Okay, we are just going to go to SDK Manager firstly. Now this SDK Manager is a great place to install any missing components that you might have previously forgotten to add in your installation. Now the only component that I will be going to add here is the Android SDK command line tools. So let's go ahead and tick this and let's click on apply. So um, this will sh so this says that there is an estimated download of 104 MB and some disk will be occupied and that's all fine. Just click on OK and uh, accept the license. And then again, let's wait for this download and installation to complete as well. Okay, so this component is also installed. Let's click on finish and let's uh, click on cancel over here. Now I'll go back to more actions and I am going to click on AVD manager. Now this AVD manager stands for Android virtual device manager. So now I am going to create a new virtual device so that I can run and test my Flutter applications on my Windows system itself. So let's click on create virtual device. Now there is such a wide variety of options to choose from. Okay, so I am just going to go with let's say Pixel XL. Okay, and we'll click on next. As a next step, we have to again choose one of the system images to create our Android virtual device on our Windows system. So I am going to choose the latest one, which is API level 30, which is called R at the moment. You might have a different thing depending on the time at which you are viewing this video. All right. So let's click on download. And again, this is a heavy download. So again, it will take some time and I'll see you at the other end of this. And we are back and as you can see, the download has been completed. Let us click on finish. Let us go ahead and click on next. Let us name it Flutter test device or something like that. I can have a look at some advanced set settings and here. And there's nothing I really want to change over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's click on finish. Okay, so we can see that we have our new device showing up in the list flutter test device. And we can go ahead and actually run this device by clicking on this play button. Let's go ahead and click this. So we see a pop-up starting AVD and this might also take a couple of seconds to launch and to boot. Let's wait for it and see you guys at the other end. So the emulator has started. Let's just wait for the device to boot. The device is also starting to boot. Let's just wait a little bit more. And all right, there you have it. Our device has completely booted up. All right, so with these things out of the way, let us go ahead and actually close Android Studio. That is as much need of Android Studio as we had. And I will once more head back to the command prompt. Here we will again type the command flutter doctor and see what kind of an output we get now. All right, so we see that mostly we have green ticks over here. There's just this one option some Android licenses are not accepted. And this also gives us the solution as to how we can resolve this. Let's just copy this and paste it in the terminal and hit enter. So these are just some Android licenses that we need to actually accept. Let us hit the Y key. Y again, 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 again. And I think so, we are all done. Let us go ahead and run Flutter Doctor one more time 
and see what happens. This time we see that everything seems to be working fine. All right, with that also out of our way, we will go ahead and create our very first Flutter project. So I will once more open the command prompt and I will type in a very simple command that is used to create a new Flutter project. So this command is Flutter create and then I give it a name first app this name can be anything you can use whatever identifier name you feel comfortable with over here All right we can see that so many files are being created and there are some other commands that are being run And that's it, we are done. To check this further, we can go back to this folder and we have this first app directory. And inside this, you can see there are many folders and many files, which means that our command ran successfully. Now, what we'll do is we'll actually open this folder in Visual Studio Code. So let's get this over here. Let's grab this and let's drag it in here. All right. All right. At this point in time, our Visual Studio code is not exactly ready to be able to code a Flutter application. So we'll go to this icon right at the bottom here and we are going to click and then we are going to search for the Flutter extension. Let's click at this and let's then try to install it. Let us now go back to the Explorer section and this is our file structure. We will be looking at it in detail in one of the future videos. For now, let us just go back into lib where most of our Dart code will actually reside and we have this main.dart file. So now we are trying to run this. So what we are going to do next is we are actually going to try to run this Flutter application to see whether our installation is actually working and able to build and run Flutter apps or not. All right, so before I actually go ahead and run this application, I just wanted to do a little restructuring of my screen. So I have my Android device on the right side and I have my Visual Studio Code on the left. So let's go, let's click on run and let's click on run without debugging for now. So as soon as we click on run without debugging, we see this little bar at the bottom, which runs the Gradle task of assemble debug. And just so you know, for the very first time, this task may take a lot of time. All right. So we'll just simply have to wait and our application will get launched on our Android virtual device. All right. As we can see, the build process has almost completed and our application has launched on our android virtual device so this is just a very basic application that is provided to us by default by flutter and we can click here and we can actually see this counter getting increased okay so the very last thing i would like to show you is i'd like to change something on my web page and as soon as i save this you can actually see the changes being reflected on the actual application. So you can see it is saving main.dart and any moment it is performing a hot reload and the hot reload is complete. And as you can see, the title here has changed. I can change it again to show you hot reload in action. One more time, just pay attention and Flutter demo has changed to Flutter. And this was it for this video, guys. I know it's been a slightly longer video than the other ones but this is generally the process that we have to follow to install flutter and get started with building flutter applications on our windows machine so if you like the content of the video please do give it a thumbs up if you like the content of my channel please click subscribe you can also hit the bell icon never miss any new updates and like always thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you very soon in a brand new video.